Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to set up the uh, Dorito approach using Zookeeper in a node-based environment. Dorito approach is a skinning task that kind of came to being and went across the internet after the soft homage end of life was kind of announced and some soft homage guys said well how would I do this in Maya or 3ds Max or Cinema 4D. Paul Neal came up with a great approach on how to do this in 3ds Max and has put out a video on it and I wanted to show a similar approach uh, using Zookeeper and how a node-based environment can help you uh, set something up like this and, and better understand it. When you do this all with picking in the viewport and things of that nature it's pretty hard to understand what's going on with a number of different point helpers that do different things and other things of that nature uh, where relationships need to be built. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, grab our skin plane and the purpose of this is to create an object that is both skinned has morphers on it and has a controller on it that then can uh, deform the surface and move with the surface at the same time. With a skin plane I'm going to go and just add a skin modifier and I'm going to pick my skin point which will be this point right here in the middle. So you'll see that we have that skin point I'm going to say edit envelopes and I'll set this to relative I'll adjust this size so that it's a little bit bigger and adjust that size. So now when I move this skin point it's going to deform the surface. I'll just go and select the skin point and you can see that moves and deforms the surface which is what we want. Let me bring this into Zookeeper so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm just going to go to views and set it to objects and schematic. And then I'll pop out a schematic view here. You can see I have my scene node which I'll just remove because I don't need it right now and I'm going to grab that skin plane and kind of just drag it in. You'll see the skin plane there. I can drag out the object and we'll see the modifier stack and my skin modifier as well as the bone that has been added. So I'm going to drag out each one of those things and then uh, I'll make these a little bit smaller just so that they're a little easier to see. We see we have the skin point there that's been added so that we can really see the relationship kind of between these guys. I'll make this a little bit larger and actually I'm probably going to dock this uh, right there. Maybe we'll move it back over to the side and just kind of pin it so that it can pop out and pop back in whenever we want. So there we go. We have this relationship here uh, of this and anywhere we go in the stack so if I want to select the root object or if I wanted to select uh, my skin modifier I could it would bring me there and of course if I want to double click and select the point helper I can get that uh, if I wanted to show and hide uh, one of these things from the view uh, I could certainly do that uh, there so I have that kind of set up. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is go back over here and I'm going to grab my morph plane uh, which is this one and for right now I'll hide the skin uh, plane in the viewport and you can see just that blue morph plane there Actually, I'll put it over to the right and I'm going to add my morph target to that. So I'll add a, uh, well let's just drag it in here. So there's our morph plane and I'm going to drag out the object. So we're just going to add a modifier stack here. I'll say new modifier stack and that will get added in. Uh, you can still, you can see the base plane if we wanted to adjust any parameters there we could but we probably don't need that. Uh, so I'll actually just remove that and I'm going to add in a morpher. So I could go through the list but I'm just going to type in morpher and pop it in there and you see we have add target. So I can click and drag out a target and I know that I want to get my bulge target which is in the scene so I'll start typing out bulge and I'll put that there. And now if I just refresh this we'll see my target is in there so there's the bulge target and there's the reference which is that object in the scene. You can see it's this object right here and if I go into here uh, I can set the value of that target. So here you see on that there and if I want to scrub this up and down I can scrub it up and down there and here's my bulge target. Probably don't need to do too much with that so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I've added in my uh, morph object and the bulge target and something I actually want to do with this is 
I'm going to add the skin plane uh, to this too. So uh, under add target, I'm going to just kind of click and drag and add that skin plane there. Just do a quick refresh there. And you can see that target two has been added to my morpher. I'm going to double click on the morpher to bring it up in the modify panel. And the reason why I added that is because I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose this automatic reload targets. And what this is going to allow me to do is have one object that is controlled uh, by both uh, kind of static targets and target like the skin plane that would get reloaded. So when I say automatically reload and I set this to 100%, which I could do here uh, or right here in the node, what will happen is uh, whether I have my bulge target on or not, if I go over and I select my skin point, as I move that, you can see the skin plane is hidden and this actual uh, morph target is deforming because that has the target loaded. And that's pretty easy for us to kind of see and understand here because we can see the relationships between everything uh, and all the targets in there. So make that bulge target a little bit bigger just so that we can kind of see the two and see what's happening in the relationships between them. So at this point we have our uh, skin plane and our bulge target loaded into our morpher uh, on the morph plane and now we want to start uh, adding in kind of a cluster node that would get deformed. So let's just go and uh, set both of these to zero. I'll right click just as I would in 3ds Max to set that plane to zero. And I'm going to go and grab my uh, morph attach. So that's this little point helper here. I'll go to animation constraints and choose an attachment constraint. And I'm just going to attach it uh, right there in the viewport. I will line this up in the viewport so I can see it. Probably be a little more precise, but I'm going to go in and say set position, set it pretty much in the center here. Go in the top view. That looks good. So that point is going to be attached there. I'm also going to choose this uh, aligned surface. I'm going to uncheck that option because we don't need it actually tilting from side to side. Now when we go back in, what we'll see is make that a little bit smaller there. If I go in here and I choose either the bulge or another target, of course that's going to kind of follow along with it. Um, so you can see that. Uh, I'll set this to three and I'll just kind of scrub this up and down. So you can see that kind of moving along with that target. Now what I want to do is just take and link uh, my other object, my other little point helper here. So I have my skin point which I've already used. Uh, I have my um, bulge target which I just kind of uh, linked, attached to the morph plane. And last but not least is my morph deform. So I'm going to take this and I actually want it to follow along with that bulge target. So I'm going to go and uh, I could actually drag and drop this here, which is very easy to do, um, or I can drag it in. And I want this to be a child. So just to see how we would do this in the node view, we have child nodes and I can just add that uh, right there. So this should be a, uh, oh, actually it should be a child node of, sorry, that morph attach. So morph to form, morph attach. I'll get the child node there, add my child node, and then you'll see over here they'll be linked together. So probably a little easy to drag and drop, but I did want to show how that gets done here in this interface. So now this guy here, uh, you can see, uh, will show up. And as I set this to 50, both of them are kind of kind of moved together. And this is going to give me the ability to move this uh, and hopefully deform the mesh afterwards. So now that we have that following along, we really just need to create the relationship between the uh, morph deform point and the skin point. So you can see that skin point back here. I'm going to just kind of move these guys down uh, over here so that I can kind of deal with them next to each other. And what we want to do is kind of work with their transforms. So I'm going to drag the transform out for the morph to form as well as the skin point. And we're going to need to do a little bit of uh, instancing. So what we want to do is instance the position of the skin point and the morph to form. 
and I could just kind of drag this in here to the uh, the skin point but I'm going to use a position list in order to give me a little bit more flexibility so uh, what I'll do is just add in a position list here I'm going to click on that and type in position list add that there so there's my position list that's been added to the morph to form and I'm going to uh, pipe this in to control value one so that we have this controller instance like so so I can get rid of this one here and now when they kind of both move that skin point will move with it you kind of see both of those kind of moving together and if I go back to my morpher and I'll set that skin target to be 100 percent now when I move this of course that gets moved like so okay so now this is moving along with it uh, if I go back over here you can see that whether I'm using the bulge target uh, or another target that will kind of move along with it so we'll set that again to 50 and if I move this it's going to move the skin point which then is going to deform the mesh um, and that's definitely what we want the only thing that we're running into here is uh, the double transform and that's pretty easy to fix I'm just going to go in and add a additional control I'm going to turn off auto layout so I can get to this guy a little bit easier move that out like so and I'm going to say that I want to add just a uh, position XYZ here so that's another control all right and that one is still active so when I double click on this or actually um, when you double click on any controller it's going to bring up uh, these guys which you would you know see inside of Max uh, which is uh, you know kind of helpful but in this case I can get to what I want here which is I just really want to average the weights and I want to make this one negative so if I average the weights out and I make this negative 100 it'll get rid of that double transform it's a little bit hacky and probably creating some frozen controllers would be much better if you're going in to do like a production uh, skinned character but for this it's kind of quick and uh, works okay so what we've done here is we've created our position list we've instanced our controller here for the position and we've uh, averaged our weights out so that we don't get that double transform in this and now we can move this along uh, it'll move along with the uh, any of the bulge or other morph targets that you might make and that's kind of the uh, Dorito approach with our node based uh, scene graph here with uh, Zookeeper uh, one last thing we might want to do is just instance those rotations so we'll take those rotations and because uh, right now if I rotate this it's not actually going to rotate the skin point so if I take this and I instance that I can go just directly in there for a uh, simple instance for that and when I rotate this now it'll rotate properly so I can get the rotation out of that skinning as well so if I'm gonna come back to this I might just kinda clean some of these up you can go in and select a bunch of them make them a little bit smaller uh, and just adjust the way they look so that you can know you know what's needed there if there was piece of information here that was important to you or you wanted to remember that you had averaged these weights you could keep that opened up these guys I can probably uh, keep small same with the morph attach probably don't need that like so so I'll make some of these a little bit smaller you know this is going to be something that I'll probably deal with quite a bit so here are my two targets if I want to add more targets I have that there and I have kind of a simplified graph that if I want to go in and uh, kind of go through I can edit something and I can save this and add a new schematic view whenever I want so if I just want to call this uh, skin setup for that portion and you know I add a new schematic view later to do materials or something else in uh, I can always have this open in my scene so that I can easily see what's going on with these objects so that's the Dorito approach using a uh, node-based workflow in Zookeeper. Uh, hopefully that would help you guys visualize how you'd create a complex setup like this. Thank you very much.